Hi. Hi. I'm Jacqueline. I'm Dave. And we are the Border Hookups. And today we're talking about boondocking and we love boondocking. So we wanted to give you guys some tips and tricks about boondocking. That was quite possibly your best interview segment <laughs> ever. Why are you being so nice? Because I don't think I can get Wayne Gretzky on the phone for you. <laughs> we haven't talked about that yet. I know. It's been a long, long time coming. It's been a long, long, long time. It's been a long, long time coming. It's been a long, long, long time. First off, what is boondocking? Well, boondocking is basically dry camping on free land. You don't have water hookups, you don't have electrical hookups, you don't have sewer dump. You're staying places like National Forest Land, um, BLM Land, that mm -hmm. is boondocking. So we're just gonna go through and talk about what do you wanna do before you go boondocking? What are some things that you can do to make your boondocking experience better? And what do you wanna do when you are leaving your boondocking spot? All right, before you go boondocking, you just wanna make sure that your rig is in working order. So make sure everything's working, all of the things that you need, the necessities are working, and you wanna know if your rig is appropriate for the type of terrain where you are going. So, you know, is it too low to the ground? Is it too big? It's not gonna get into a certain place. Um, you just want to be informed about that. The other thing you want to do before you head out boondocking, make sure you're stocked up on things like groceries, LP, fuel in your generator, extra fuel for your generator, fuel in your tow vehicle or whatever you're driving. Make sure those gas tanks are full because you don't always know what you're going to have access to when you get out there. So you want to go in fully loaded and ready to go. We bring extra water with us in the back of the truck in little water jugs. Um, we don't like to pull with a full water tank in the rig, so we maybe fill it halfway full and then fill the rest when we get there. And you also want to make sure that your black tank, gray tank um, have been dumped, have been emptied before you go out because once you're there, that's where you're going to have to store everything. So you want it empty when you arrive. Also make sure that your batteries are charged. We almost forgot that one. We did almost forget that one. But we didn't. But we did not. <laughs> so so close. dangerously close. <laughs> what are some of the things that you can do to alleviate that anxiety, that nervousness um, when you go boondocking? That's a very good question, Jacqueline. Uh, one thing you can do is practice. Sit in your driveway, unplugged, fill your tanks, do everything like you would be doing. If you are out boondocking, just sit in your driveway because if it doesn't work out for you, you run out of batteries or you run out of water, you can always run inside just like camping in your parents' backyard. You can also go with friends. So your first time boondocking, maybe invite some friends to go along with you, especially if they're friends who have boondocked themselves. You have one another to bounce ideas off of. You should also research the area where you're going. Make sure that you know uh, where your resources are. Maybe look at reviews for that area. That's always really helpful. I have nothing to add. Okay, good. That's a first. So now you're arriving at your boondocking spot. Are you excited mm -hmm. to be there? I am, oh, yeah. I can sense it. Yeah. You want to make sure you don't arrive after dark because mm -hmm. you're going in an area a lot of times that you don't know and it's not you know, the roads aren't always going to be perfect. It's not set up like an RV park where everything's marked and lit up. Um, you can hit washes, you can hit uh, rocks, you can hit who knows what. And you want to also make sure you have a plan B. So when we go in, we'll kind of say, well, there's a another spot 30 minutes away, 20 minutes away. And if that um, boondocking spot is full or it doesn't work out, you're not comfortable with it, you can always leave and go to your plan B. And that's another reason that you want to go before dark because you want to get to your plan B before dark as well. Right, and your plan B could be just a Walmart that's 30 minutes away, mm -hmm. or it could be, yes, an RV park. It doesn't have to be another boondocking spot, right. um, but it can be. 
And then you want to uh, make sure that you are checking your boondocking spot out without driving your rig into the spot. If you're not sure if there's an outlet, just park and walk down to the area where you want to boondock. Or if you have a bike, you could take your bike. Um, if you have a, a vehicle behind that you're towing, you could unhook that and then drive to that site as well. When you arrive, if you have neighbors, what should you do? If you have neighbors when you're rolling in, you know, don't be cranking your radio. It, sound carries. Um, make sure you're, you're not, your LED lights aren't shining on their, you know, their camper. If you turn the corner, kill your lights for a second so you don't wash across their camper. Um, give them space. I always say a football field. I think mm -hmm. a football field's safe. Um, I think uh, sometimes people want to park close to you, not to be jerks or anything, but they, they're maybe nervous. Yeah, they and feel a little safer that Yeah, way. they feel a little safer snugging up to you. The other thing you can do too is get to know your neighbors. We always say don't approach their rig at night. And uh, we never approach their rig if they're not outside. But if they're outside working, I might walk over and give a in the distance wave and smile and just introduce myself and because one reason you do that is you get to know these people a you make new friends and b mm -hmm. if you have to run into town or they have to run into town now you can watch each other's rigs and uh it's just their safety in numbers and then if you have a generator just you know be respectful and make sure that your generator is farther away from them maybe on the other side of your rig um, so that they don't have to listen to it and don't bring an open cage generator or if you do make sure you park very far away from people right. the other thing is dogs and a lot of people have dogs and dogs are wonderful but I know personally when I go out boondocking I don't want to listen to somebody's dogs outside barking the entire time because I want to be out there for the peace and quiet so just keep that in mind um, that you're used to your dogs barking maybe, but other people might not want to hear the dogs barking all day long. The same goes with cats. cats. <laughs> they just get so loud. That meowing. That purring. It's the purring. The purring. Another thing you want to make sure you do when you go into a spot is know the rules. Fire bands, check out the fire bands in the area. If there are any, uh, especially in the southwest, it can get dry and windy really fast and you don't want to cause a fire because that's a bad, bad, bad deal for everyone involved. The other thing you want to do is keep, it, keep an eye on watering holes for livestock. I don't think you can be within a, is a half a mile of a, of a watering hole because uh, then it disrupts the cows and Jacqueline loves cows so don't disrupt those cows. And the other thing you want to make sure you do is uh, know if you can camp there. Don't just assume that there's a road down off a highway and you can go camp there. You want to make sure you do your homework because a lot of it's private land and you do not want to get the six o'clock in the morning knock from a rancher saying, what are you doing here? And if it is permissible to camp there, you want to know how long you can camp there. Mm -hmm. uh, BLM regulations state 14 days maximum that, mm -hmm. you, can, that you can stay there. Mm -hmm. So abide by the rules. So now you have arrived to the spot where you are boondocking and here's some tips about that. One thing is make sure you conserve water. You will be surprised how quickly you go through water. When you're in your sticks and bricks, it's endless. When you are out boondocking, it's precious. So you wanna make sure that you conserve water by doing things like putting your bucket in your shower. We've talked about this before and uh, catch all that excess water and then use that to fill your toilet. The other thing you want to do is, um, for dishes, we have a big farm style sink, it's massive, and we use a, a Tupperware bucket that goes in there, a little tub, so that we don't have to use so much water. Another thing is take short showers, a lot of people call them military showers, um, in and out quick, turn the water on, get wet, turn the water off, soap up, turn the water on, rinse off. You're going to save a lot, a lot, a lot of water. About face. Another thing is to conserve on your garbage. So if you can have a fire at your boondocking spot, put away all of your cardboard and all of your paper um, in, a, in an area and then have a fire and burn it all. 
also condense your trash so break things down um, step on your cans that type of thing uh, we also have small trash bags in addition to our large kitchen bags and you know the little shopping bags you get when you go to I don't know CVS or, or whatnot and what we do is fill those up and then that way if we are in town and we stop at a Walmart or somewhere, you can just take your little bag of garbage and put it right in the trash there. Yeah, another thing to do is when you go grocery shopping, um, if there are if there's packaging that's not required for you to put it in your fridge, you can get rid of that garbage when you're in a place where you can actually, like it has a dumpster. Unpackage it where you can unpackage it and you're gonna have a lot less garbage when you're finally out there. So we're gonna talk about power and how can you conserve power? How can you conserve power? Don't uh, turn, leave your lights on. It's just like yeah. mom told us, you know, don't leave the lights <laughs> on. Don't leave the furnace too high. Don't watch TV all night long. <laughs> all these little things, you figure out real fast that you don't leave your lights on. And if it's not necessary, you don't use it. At nighttime, we even turn off our Starlink because that takes some power. Mm -hmm. um, all of our, you know, anything that's plugged in, we, we turn off. And then we also have a backup battery brick that we can use and we can plug things in there if our power gets really, really low. And we're able to monitor our power. We have an app on our phone that we can use. We have solar panels, um, so we monitor that. We also put our refrigerator on propane because it's a dual propane electric and we put it on propane just so that we can conserve our power unless it's you know, summer months and the sun is really strong and up for a long time, then we have plenty of power to run our refrigerator. Right. Here's a little bonus thing. Ooh. To shoot this video, I just switched our fridge over to electric because mm. I didn't want to hear the propane kicking in and off, on and off because of the microphone. And I set an alarm on my phone for two hours that says, switch the fridge back over to LP because what happens, and it has happened to us, is we forget and at about eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night, we get a warning that our batteries are about to die. And that's not a good feeling. Because we've left the refrigerator on the whole time? Because we've left the refrigerator on the whole time. And our fr refrigerator draws a lot of power. And some of you will say, get a 12 volt fridge. We would love to. Mm -hmm. Ching, 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 ching. Yeah. If you get to your site and you have to unhook, um, you know, drive into town or take off for a little bit and you're leaving your camper behind, make sure that you're being safe by locking your doors. Um, even if you don't see anybody else around, lock your doors, lock the doors to your underneath bays. Uh, we also use a pin lock mm -hmm. um, to lock up just to make it a little bit more difficult. I know there are people out there that put in their X chocks in between their tires and then they lock those x chocks as well mm -hmm. you know your generator if it's sitting out lock your generator to your rig or bikes. bring it with you bikes all of that stuff even cover your bikes because then somebody's driving by don't make it super easy yeah. and don't advertise it we've never had any issues no. but but partly because we do those things i think anything that you think might be attractive yeah. to somebody you know, driving by. My wife, for instance. <laughs> I always lock her to the, the back of the truck and <laughs> life's good. Nut job. Also, when you're leaving your rig behind or your camper behind, make sure you're turning the water pump off. We have randomly left our faucet running before. If you did leave a tap on and then you didn't turn your water pump off and you left for hours, that would be a mess. Turn your furnace down. Pull your awning in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the wind comes out of nowhere. It's not like it's, oh, it's starting to get a little breezy, especially down where we are in the southwest. It'll come out of nowhere and you'll hear a crunch and that thing is gone and they are expensive buggers. Very, yeah. And I say turn your furnace down just because then you can save on propane. I think that's it. That's all I got. Okay. Why is that guy walking okay. away with our generator? <laughs> Do you know him? <sighs> you know what? So now we have completed our boondocking experience and it's time to go home, back to life, back to reality. I'm not gonna sing it. <sighs> so close, so close. Anyway, 
So now you're gonna take off, and uh, you want to make sure you do some simple things like pack out pack your garbage. Pack in, pack out, right? Pack in, pack out. Pack out your garbage, and if you see somebody else's garbage, just pick it up because we want to keep these free lands open. And the quickest way to get them closed is to trash them. So if you see somebody else's stuff, grab it and bring it out with you. Throw it away. Make sure your fire is completely out. So that means covering it up with dirt, with sand. Make sure it's cold to the touch before you leave because you don't want to start a forest fire either. Another quick way to shut down free land. Right, and only you can, can prevent, prevent wildfires. Wildfires. Used to be forest fires. <laughs> we met Smokey the Bear. Yes, Smokey Bear, isn't it? Smokey the Bear, or is it Smokey Bear? I don't bear? know, I think they might have changed that too. We I don't know. I can't keep up the kids, <laughs> kids these days. I don't know. Yeah. But yes, try to leave the land better than before you arrived. That's kind of the motto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All set. Welcome to another healthy living tip with Jacqueline. So it is almost a new year. And with that, a lot of people are thinking about their health goals. I did the same thing. I was a New Year's resolutioner in 2020. And that is when I found this program. Um, and I went on program and since then have impacted at least 850 people. For me, increased energy, sleeping better, learning how to cook. So I thought I'd answer a few questions about my program today and I promise I'll be quick, but there are some questions that people ask. So question number one is usually, is this some sort of fad diet? Well, it really isn't. So there are no supplements, no pills, and no fads like you know, this magic crystal will make you lose weight. Secondly, does it require exercise? And no, it doesn't. This is a nutrition-based program. I also get asked if this is a low-carb diet, and it actually is. However, it is not as low-carb as something like keto or Atkins diet. Um, the keto diet is about 20 grams of carbs or less, and this program is 80 to 100 grams. Of course, that depends on, you know, some things like if you're diabetic and things like that. Another question, what does it cost? Well, that all depends. We have several different plans. We have diabetic plans, we have a gout plan, we have seniors plans, we have nursing moms plans. So it all depends. Now, all of the plans are a combination of food that you would get from the program and food you would make for yourself. So it really depends on which plan and how much you're spending right now and what are you spending that money on. A lot of times people actually come out ahead. If you want more information and you'd like me to contact you, I have a contact form. You can go on Facebook, look up Jacqueline Hudson Coach, or you can fill out my contact form. We'll put that in the description. And that's been another Healthy Living Tip with Jacqueline. Happy New Year. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of the Border Hookups Go RVing and please remember to subscribe and to ding that bell so that we can let all of you know as to when we have more episodes coming out. I think you should probably learn proper sign language because I don't know what that was. That was, uh, it was very nice to meet your family. I can't <laughs> wait to do it again. If you liked what you saw in this video, please give us a thumbs up. I think that's universal. And place a comment below so we know what you're thinking. We like to get back to you. And we hope to see you all out here. See y'all out here. There. Exclamation point. I think that's it. That's all I got. Okay. Let's carry on then. Carry on thy wayward son. There'll be truth when you are gone. Maybe we should just get but off the guitar. You really had to rest. Don't you cry no. Do 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 do. You, you did a great job staying focused. Thank you. I was impressed. I'm trying to be taller than you. You just, it's your. I know. It's your uh, posture. I know. Yeah. Actually, I'm not even as. Usually I'm like this. Yeah. So. Nice try. <laughs> Who knows what? This is a loud purr. Oh, okay. <sighs> and that Garfield with his lasagna. <laughs> How old do you think Garfield is now? 78. 78, 79. No, I'm serious. I have no He's idea. He's old. Yeah. Probably our age? Anyway.
moving on then. Moving on then. I always have to get the last word, don't I? <laughs> yes. Yes, you do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to get physical. I wonder at what point Smokey the Bear will just be B. Like Kanye, he's yay. Smokey B? It'll just be B. He'll keep shortening it, and then it'll just be B. That's just weird. Are we done? In what way? Us? I mean, us done? <laughs> For good? Well, yeah, until you get me on the phone with Wayne Kretzky. Do you know Wayne Kretzky? <laughs> Is there anyone out there? That'd be awesome. Ooh. What if Wayne Gretzky watched our channel? <laughs> yeah, because he's going to become a full-time RVer. Right. Well, I heard Boondocker. He's, he's trying to save cash. <laughs> he's trying to squirrel away some extra pennies. I'm sure Janet would go for that, too. <laughs> Jay? <laughs> she doesn't have to cook. She's rich. <laughs> maybe, She's married to Wayne Gretzky. Maybe she he's likes perfect. Cook. He cooks for her all the time. How do you know that? Because he's Wayne Gretzky. Do you think he makes the uh, flapjacks with a hockey stick? What's a flapjack? Is that pancakes. a pancake? Why? What's the difference between a flapjack and a pancake? Um, Is it like a pop soda type thing? I don't know. I think it's like old school, like Grizzly Adams. Hmm. Deep inside the forest, there's a door into another world. I can went off pitch there for a second. It's like flapjacks is from back in like the trapper's time. Or are flapjacks from down south and pancakes are from up north? I don't know. Somebody will yeah. tell us. Okay. Good thing we're together. Good thing I'm hungry for flapjacks now. <laughs> All right. Well, looks like you're cooking. Back to life. Back to reality. <sighs> However do you want me. However do you want me. However do you need me, however do you want me. Back to reality, back to life, back to reality. We'll listen later. Sorry. I apologize. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry.